my name is Kelsey Prediger, and I'm the founder and director of the Pangolin Conservation and Research Foundation. I'm also the secretariat of the Namibian Pangolin Working Group, which is chaired by Kenneth Wiesev of the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. I am also an IUCN Pangolin Specialist Group member and the co-chair for Southern Africa. Some of the work that I do really focuses on research um, when it comes to pangolin ecology and the monitoring of live confiscated released pangolins. And this research is extremely beneficial because we learn a lot about pangolins where we know very little information. I completed my Master's of Natural Resource Management, focused specifically on pangolin ecology, where we looked at home range sizes, uh, prey preference, and burrow selection in one population in central Namibia. And with this information, we are able to um, get a better understanding that their preferences vary across habitats and regions, and that we need to do more research to understand um, what they eat in different areas of the country. But this has been beneficial in um, helping us develop guidelines for pangolins, as well as uh, drafting the National Conservation Management Plan. I've gotten into conservation um, because I've had a passion for wildlife, and um, I really enjoy helping a species, and that's kind of what got me involved with pangolins. They're the most trafficked mammal, but very under-researched. We still have a lot that we can learn about the species. Some of the successes include completing my master's degree. All of the research that I've completed um, is underway for publication, as well as accomplishments of the Namibian Pangolin Working Group. We have created um, transport guidelines, release guidelines, as well as a uh, first responders handbook, which we've trained over 140 first responders on as the Namibian Pangolin Working Group. We've also created an ecology poster for Namibia that's been currently being distributed to schools in all the different regions and communities. We have also an awareness poster that was redeveloped. So there's been quite a lot um, of accomplishments, I would say, in the past year for pangolins. And as we move forward, we hope to tag every single live confiscated released pangolin to gain an understanding of their survival and survival strategies, as well as their impact on resident pangolins. A little bit of an explanation on how we track pangolins. We have a couple different tracking systems. Um, so we have a VHF, which is very high frequency transmitter. And this transmitter, we are able to locate it using an antenna and a handheld device. So we use this device to track the transmitter. Basically, it's tracking a radio frequency and we'll get a beep and the closer you get, the stronger the signal. So that allows us to locate the animal, but it doesn't collect any data for us. So you actively have to find the animal every time that um, you're tracking it and the range on that transmitter is only about at maximum one to two kilometers. If they're underground in a burrow, it could be as little as 10 meters. Um, and so having said that, confiscated pangolins can move large distances over a short period of time, as well as dispersing pangolins. So we have a satellite transmitter. Um, I didn't mention with the other one, but here you can see we have a bolt nut and washer. Um, the end of the pangolin scale is non-vascularized, meaning there's no nerves or feeling. So we drill a hole through the scale and attach this onto the scale. And with this transmitter, we're actually able to track the movement because this transmitter communicates to the satellites in the sky, which then communicate to the computer. And we can see um, where the pangolin is moving and, and it actually will collect a lot of data for us such as how fast it was moving, the position of the transmitter, as well as um, the temperature around. So we get a lot of information from these two things, and um, it's a really valuable resource um, to understand me what happens with pangolins. Because they're predominantly nocturnal, not everywhere can we consistently track them with VHF transmitters due to other dangerous um, wildlife and circumstances. 
so we can gain a lot of information by using these together. We use both tags because um, in some situations carnivores will bite a transmitter off and it's a backup plan. If one is off, we still have a means to relocate the animal. When it comes to the satellite tracking, it's not very, um, it's not a cheap thing, it's a bit expensive. And so um, the first GPS satellite tracked pangolin was in July of 2020. Um, she's still doing well. Uh, you can actually read a little bit about her story on the Conservation Namibia website blog. Um, and this year, um, we only got transmitters in the second half of the year, but we were able to fit five. And our goal for this year is to be able to fit every single live confiscated pangolin with a satellite tracker. And there's on average 30 live confiscated pangolins per year, give or take. My final take home message to Namibians about pangolins are that we should really work together to raise awareness and protect them. They are a prehistoric, basically, species that's been around for nearly 85 million years, and they've only come under threat recently due to the trafficking of, of the species. And um, they do provide valuable resources for Namibians far and wide. If you recall the really dry years we had in 2018, 2019, quite a few pangolins died as well as livestock and wildlife. And pangolins actually consume a large number of ants and termites, up to 7 million per year, actually. And um, the species they choose are actually harvesting species, meaning the ants and termites they eat target grasses and organic material, which in turn is food for wildlife and livestock. So having a healthy population of pangolins in your area is much more valuable than removing them from wildlife. So a happy pangolin is a wild pangolin.